Governor Nasser Arifah has explained that civil servants and political appointees who earn 67,000 naira and above make a contribution to the cost of buying palliatives for vulnerable citizens of Adunas State whose livelihoods have been negatively affected by the lockdown. According to him, this category of civil servants was chosen to ensure that no public servant has less than 50,000 naira to manage monthly. In response to this, the Kaduna chapter of the Nigerian Labour Congress has rejected a salary court of senior civil servants, saying it must only be done with the consent of the workers. And still with us to have a conversation around this, it's political analyst Dami Adebayo. Thank you, Dami, for staying with us. And this time, via phone, how are you? I'm very well with you. Let's look into it quickly. The Kaduna chapter of the Nigerian Labour Congress has rejected the 25% salary court of senior civil servants in the state by the state government to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. What's your thoughts on this? I need your reaction. I think, you know, decisions like this should be of, you know, it shouldn't be a decree by the state government. It should be a concern like with these people. Um, and the fact that that hasn't happened is unfortunate. And I do think that workers' profit should be the first to be when the government runs out of funds or finances as well. People's money is people's money. It doesn't belong to the government. Now, what about, let's talk about the legality and the constitutionality of this, of this act by the governor. How, how legal and how constitutional is it for him to do this? I struggle to see how legal it would be. But again, um, this isn't, with all due respect, this is a government that should have lost the post. Now, Dami, the, the governor, Mr. Erefai, said it was an action taken across the board to ensure that public servants make some sacrifices for the welfare of the citizens. Isn't this valid enough as a reason? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, think when you, I think when people make sacrifices, they decide to do it with their own free will and volition. They are not forced to do it by elected state governors. Yeah, but, but if, if, if they had a talk about this, it, it sounded to me there was, there was a meeting, there was an agreement. Doesn't that mean consent in, in, that, in that stead? I think until I see the workers come out and say for themselves, I'd be willing to argue that it was most likely an order, and then, that they had no leverage. Okay, then in the times we're in, let's, let's consider the principle of morality here. Is, is this justified if he decides to do that? No, he isn't. He's the state governor of a state that has resources and that has a budget and that has recourse to taking loans. Taking money out of the pockets of people to reward other people as well has all um, types of um, autocratic terms to it. The Labour Union of the state has asked the government to return the deduction or face the wrath of the union. What, what do you think could be the possible consequences if the union's order is defied here? Really, I don't think they have a lot. <laughs> I think they'd probably go to the courts, maybe a strike. But again, nothing that they can't weather. Now, we're dealing, this, we're dealing with a social crisis that, that means uh, people will have to make special sacrifices. I mean, the, especially the privileged ones. And he felt that his workers were privileged because he made reference to the fact that he had paid them salary and the state was one of those states to begin to implement a new minimum wage. I mean, where, where, is, where is the place of sacrifice in all of this, given the social crisis we're facing? And what would you think would have been the alternative, Dami? People should opt for sacrifices. If you can't secure the buy-in, then he needs to find alternatives, whether from the federal, whether from the private sector. But taking money out of the pockets of people <laughs> to, um, to um, replenish state coffers is wrong. It's all shades of wrong at any time, even now. All right. Political analyst Dami Adebayo, thank you for joining us and for your time on PLUS Politics. No problem. Always a pleasure. We'll take our PLUS report now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Stay with us. The Lagos State House Marina, where Lagosians await the COVID-19 updates from the number one citizen of the state, Governor Babajide Somodu. After almost five weeks of the lockdown, activities will gradually resume in Lagos next week. First, the big question. The curfew and the ban on the interstate travel directed by Mr. President. There will be an overnight curfew from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., except for essential services. This means that from the hours of 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., we will expect all Lagosians to stay in their homes from the 4th of May 2020. 
and it's a form of good news for businesses as the governor announces resumption, but not without precautionary guidelines. More stores and markets in Lagos. All open markets and stores will be allowed to open from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on selected days. Um, apart from the economic issues that Mr. Governor has spoken about, there are some medical reasons. Um, with the complete lockdown, we're beginning to see uh, levels of uh, lack of nutritious food and malnutrition. Um, that is the perfect situation for the virus to infect people. A malnourished body is not able to withstand the infection. And what would be the fate of religious organizations, institutions of education and entertainment centers? On education, all schools and institutions at primary, secondary and tertiary levels will continue to remain physically close. Students are expected to continue learning alternative online and media channels as announced by the various institutions of learning. All places of worship, be it formal or informal, will remain closed for, as for, from any form of congregational service or assemblage until further notice. Our Muslim brothers and sisters taking part in the Ramadan fast must observe their meal and prayers within their homes. As businesses gradually open by Monday, wearing face masks is also very compulsory. We are encouraging businesses in Lagos to commence the production of face masks as we roll out our new campaign to mask up Lagos. Currently, 1.5 million households have been tested. As the move to curtail the spread continues, the governor assures that one more million families will be tested in the coming days. Mary Chinda for Plus TV Africa. Here is my take. According to Worldometer data, about 230, 401 people have died so far from the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak as of April 30, 2020, at exactly 1655 GMT. In Nigeria, the country's total deaths from the virus now stands at 51, with a total number of infections at 1,728. And Lagos, as the epicenter of the virus, has a record number of confirmed cases of 931, according to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, the NCDC. I do agree and understand what the public health implications and the imperatives of wanting to gradually ease on the lockdown in some parts of the country. But I think it is also very ponderous and to accentuate the fact that the three states currently under total lockdown are the economic administrative action centers of Nigeria. And with a larger number of people living and working in these states, the implication of the implementation of the control measures in place cause for concern. In my opinion, the planned phase easing of lockdown could potentially and exponentially cause a rise of coronavirus cases in Nigeria. The rise of cases in Nigeria is quite worrisome, and the need for an effective implementation of the measures as directed by the government needs a full enforcement by all stakeholders. More ever than before, there is a need for individual and corporate responsibility for social distancing and maintaining a regular cleanliness hygiene in order not to further escalate the scale of community spread. While I have to applaud the government for being proactive so far, but I have to emphasize that there's, there's a need for us to put enforcement machineries in place to ensure these measures are stated are adhered to in 100% compliance. I think the Kaduna State Government's announcement of deducting 25% from salaries of civil servants to provide policies for the vulnerable citizens affected by the COVID-19 lockdown sure does appeal to the conscience and morality of every human with certain privileges at this time to give out some measures of help in any way, but then again, I opine that the deduction should have been done with the workers' consent. And also, maybe a due consultation with the union on the issue on the deduction should have been a better way to go about it. I don't want to think that the labor union in Kaduna State is against the provision of palliatives to the poor to cushion the COVID-19 lockdown from the salaries of civil servants in Kaduna State because that could be interpreted as being insensitive. I think the labor union ought to have been carried along and such deductions or contributions should have been made voluntary and not compulsory. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Plus Politics returns same time tomorrow. In the meantime, do stay safe.